Hey, Ed from Precision Gun Reviews here, and we have another Walther on the table. This time, it's the one that comes in the smallest box, but it happens to be the biggest pistol. This is Walther's newest member of the family, the Creed, which essentially replaces the PPX in their lineup. Um, it's an update to that gun, and it is a full-size, hammer-fired, polymer framed double stack 9 millimeter, and there it is it's got a 16 round magazine plus one in the chamber it is 7.3 inches long it is 5.6 inches tall and it is 1.3 inches wide it's got a four inch barrel and it weighs 27 ounces with the magazine. No magazine disconnect. A great, great mag release. Big and super functional. It's got a Picatinny rail. The mag release is interchangeable, left and right handed. And it's got an interesting trigger. This gun is a hammer fired gun but it's a very, very light hammer fire because it is not double action. It is a pre-cocked hammer fired weapon. And that makes it a little unique and gives the trigger sort of a, a, a very light and different kind of feel. It's, it's very light, there's really nothing there. It breaks nice and cleanly. Um, and the reset is about halfway through. It's right to that staging point. So it's not the smoothest trigger. It's, it's a light trigger. There's not much going on, but there's a little bit of grittiness right in there. And you can feel that when you're shooting. Um, but it's got that, that hammer. So if you're looking specifically for a hammer-fired gun, this is one of those that you might want to look at. However, as I said, it is not a double action. This trigger does not cock the hammer. So all the, all the talk of double action only pistols, um, I don't buy it because double action to me means one action cocks the hammer, one action releases it. Or one action cocks the striker, one action releases it. If it doesn't do that, it's somewhere in between a single and a double. So this is a pre-cocked or semi-cocked uh, hammer fired pistol. Um, it does have these updated ergonomics trying to match what Walther perfected with the PPQ really ergonomic grip this one's a little bit bulkier it doesn't have any interchangeable back straps whatever this is you're stuck with it's uh, it's on the big side but it's definitely very comfortable it's got this cross directional stippling um, it's not the grippiest but it really works well it's got these these bumps these ridges these minor finger ridges in the front strap, really nice. Um, the, the mags seat in there beautifully, flush. They have this ability to be pulled out in a, you know, in a type three malfunction. Um, for such an inexpensive gun, and this is a, a budget-minded gun, it's got an MSRP of $399, and you could find it for like $330. Um, it really is well put together. The fit and finish is just as excellent as on other Walther firearms. Um, the slide is a stainless steel, tenifer coated slide. The sights are polymer, but they're three dot, nice big three dots, and the rear sight is screw adjustable for windage. The trigger, um, I mean, the trigger is sort of the draw of this one. It's like very different and interesting. The trigger and the price, of course. Uh, the trigger and the, the hammer fired nature of this gun are, are really interesting about this pistol, and that combined with the price are a big draw. Um, I really like it in theory. Um, it feels good. Dry firing, it's great. It's got that little bit of grit right, right before it breaks. It has like a little bit of a hang up, and you can feel that when you're shooting. But it's very consistent. It's about 6.5 pounds all the time. 
and uh, not a hiccup with this gun. It runs flawlessly in my experience um, and it's comfortable to use. The, the only things that sort of caught me off guard about this pistol is the, is the interesting handling of the gun. See, it's so top-heavy with this big slide and this very light polymer lower. So you get this sort of teeter-tottering balance issue, which you can find with some other pistols that have that off-balanced weight distribution. And in this one in particular, the recoil impulse was interesting. So it's not a heavy recoiling gun, obviously, because it's, it's big, it's pretty heavy, it's 27 ounces. Uh, but because of the slide, and I guess combined with the recoil spring, when you shoot, it, it recoils back and then pulls back forward. As the slide slams home, it lurches the gun back forward, and it feels strange. Um, I can't say that it's terrible. It helps you get the nose of the gun back on target, which is interesting. It's like a self-correcting uh, car. It's like a self-driving car. It puts the nose back on target for you for follow-up shots. It just feels really weird and it, it takes some getting used to. Otherwise it shoots great. Like I said, it ran flawlessly. The trigger is... it's not an amazing trigger, I'll tell you that. But it's it's interesting enough that I like shooting it despite the, the little bit of grit in there right before it breaks. That, right there. You can, It gets there and then there's just a little a little bit of something in there before it goes. But it snaps really cleanly and doesn't travel too far past there. And then it'll reset kind of right back to that spot. So that's what that looks like. Uh, I said this great magazine release. It's got this big slide stop, slide release. Nothing on this side, but this mag release is interchangeable. Um, breaking it down, we're going to see a couple of other interesting things going on in this pistol. Now, I'm not a big fan of this. This can go way for You can just keep turning that that takedown lever, but um, you're not supposed to, obviously. So you kind of want to get it right into there and then just stop. But it's not designed with such precision that it'll stop definitively on its own. So I'm going to do that, let it forward, and pull the trigger, and away it goes. Now, here's some interesting stuff going on. We've got this captive recoil spring. Great, fine. Polymer rod. And then this barrel. This barrel assembly, let's call it. So it's it's multi-part. So you have the barrel that slides into what is essentially a sleeve that goes around it and has the lockup. And then the feed ramp is a third separate piece that sits also attached to this sleeve. I don't think I'm knowledgeable enough to to say the implications of what that is, what that what that means for it, but it's weird. Um, but again, I haven't had a single hiccup with the gun, so that's that's just fine. Otherwise, uh, everything else looks pretty normal. Uh, firing pin safety. Um, it's got an internal extractor, and not not a whole lot else going on in there. And. Uh, that's about that's about all there's to say. It's got traditional rifling, and this recoil spring sits right in there. Slide this back home, pull that, slip that back, and we're good to go. All right, so that's that's the Walther Cree. It's a full size, hammer fired, polymer framed nine millimeter for the budget conscious, and it's well built. I gotta say that for the price. It's, it's really solid. It may not be the most refined in terms of its mechanism. Um, you know, the trigger's a little, little crunchy, but it's a good design. And the hammer, having a hammer, for those of you who swear by a hammer, well, there it is. This is a gun that has that, but it has it in a package that resembles the striker fire philosophy. Um, it is not double action, however, and has no restrike capability. So it the trigger has a little bit of that LEM trigger feel that you get on an HK, but unlike an HK, you're going to have to rack that slide in one way or another to get it to cock the hammer. And we can even take a look at that. Um, if we just focus here on that, you see the hammer in there, it's deep in that hole. We pull this back 
And now the hammer is pre-cocked right there. Then we pull the trigger and the hammer comes back and releases deep back into the hole again. So that's what that pre-cocked hammer is. So it's a little different. And Walther seems to make a habit of making things a little different, making their firearms a little different from the norm. And different is not bad, especially when they do it well. And they do it well. Walther made this Creed, made an affordable, full-size firearm, Picatinny rail, 16-round magazine, two, two mags in the box, 4-inch barrel, hammer-fired, a decent trigger, and it put it, they put it all in a package for a really inexpensive price to get more people um, in with this Creed. To get more people into a firearm with this Creed. And, you know, building off of the ergonomic philosophy with that PPQ, that grip, it's really comfortable, it feels really good, uh, despite the imbalance of the top-heavy slide and that, and that recoil impulse. It's a, you know, it's a solid, solid firearm, especially for the price. If you're looking for something of this size, then it's hard to say not to get it at that price. Obviously, it's not the most ideal carry weapon, which we tend to focus on more here, but it's a, it's a solid gun nonetheless. So that's the Walther Creed. We would definitely recommend it if it suits the role for which you're looking for a firearm. This has been Ed with Precision Gun Reviews. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like our videos, and of course, subscribe to the channel to get all of our new videos as they come out. Until next time, stay safe.